I was reading a story um, earlier this morning, and it was looking at the Department of Higher Education's annual report for 2023-2024. And one of the items in that report is that universities produced just over 5,000 fewer engineering and science graduates in the year under review. I mean, that's in a country which has the need for skilled professionals in those fields that South Africa has, that is very depressing, that 5,000 fewer were produced. We should be producing more and more every year, not fewer and fewer. And the Higher Education and Training Minister, Nobush Lenkebane, says the problem is with the Department of Basic Education because the Department of Basic Education is not preparing grade 10, 11, grade 12, I suppose starting much earlier in the curriculum, not preparing them for the level of maths and science knowledge and familiarity that you need in order to graduate with an engineering or science degree. And that took me to a column written on Daily Maverick by my next guest, Professor Michael Le Cordeur, who is uh, a professor and chairing the Department of Curriculum Studies in the Faculty of Education at Stellenbosch University. That column with that headline, Why Can't South African Children Do Maths? The Real Problem Lies in How We Teach It. Michael, good afternoon. Thank you for your time. And thank you for having me on your show. Uh, lovely to talk to you and, and your listeners. Michael, I mean, it is very worrying that we produce in one year 5,000 fewer science and engineering graduates than the year before. And I, I presume that you would agree the reason is because people are not being taught, A, to be excited by maths and science, and B, to become proficient enough in maths and science at school level in order to make it at tertiary level. That is, cor that is so, so, so correct. You know, in that same article, I pointed out that, you know, your Eastern countries, uh, Asian countries, you know, China and Singapore and Korea, I call them, metaphorically, I call them three wise men from the East. Uh, they are out, outshining the rest of the world. Now, it is no new news of what's happening in China at the moment and the growth that we see in countries like China and some of the Asian countries. And that is based on the fact that their learners are doing absolutely the best in mathematics and in science. And I made a point to say, can you imagine 1.4 billion Chinese kids who are now out plotting the rest of the world in maths and science, if they were to take up their rightful places in six years' time in the economy and in the working world outside, can you imagine the impact they will have on, on, on the world and, and the world economy? It is actually devastating when you think about the race towards Mars, if you think about uh, computers and you think about, you have just referred to uh, in your insert to artificial intelligence, if you put all of that in one bag and then you begin to realize, gosh, if we don't find a way to catch up soon, we, are, we will find ourselves in big trouble. And that's exactly where we are. Okay, our so learners, our students cannot do mathematics and we will have to get behind uh, what is the real reasons for that. It's important for us to know what's, what's actually going wrong here. Because I, I, I suspect the problem is not that our children don't have the intellectual capacity to do exactly. maths, but that intellectual capacity has to be brought to its highest possible level by the right kind of teaching. And you say very clearly that that is the problem, that whatever nascent yes. mathematical scientific ability children might have, and not every child has it. Some of us are more inclined to the arts than to the sciences. Yes. But those that are naturally inclined to the sciences aren't having that brought to bloom. Why not? Let me make the point right from the outset. Our learners, our children in this country, has got every potential that every other child will have in the, in the rest of the world. The likes of Elon Musk and Mark Shuttleworth was made in South Africa. It was not made in China. 
It was not made in the USA. It was made in South Africa. We have all the talent. We have all the potential. We just cannot find a way to cultivate and to turn that around into so that we can have the dividends on that. Our teachers must stop telling learners that maths is a difficult subject. It is not. Mathematics can be taught to any child if you use the right method and if you are use and if you put yourself uh, in the right attitude and if you can connect with our learners at the moment. Uh, one of the things that I think people don't pay much attention to is the literacy part of mathematics literacy. Because maths is basically trying to understand a problem. And when once you understand the problem, then you can be begin to work on the solution of that problem. Right? A farmer is taking 100 sheep to market. Uh, on their way there, one of the sheep uh, got eaten by a wolf, uh, metaphorically speaking. So what's going to happen now? Now that the kid must, un, must, must, must realize he has a problem. Something has happened to one of these particular sheep, so we cannot take all of them to the market. So uh, it, it is actually a mathematical sum because if you take 100 sheep, Minus one, you get to 99. So he or she will find a solution to a problem. Mathematics is finding a solution to a problem that is every day in our everyday lives and world. And that is that we must teach in our classes to tell kids, here's a problem, but you are so smart. You know what? You will and you can find a solution for this problem. And I'm going to help you finding that solution. Because once you have a solution, you can actually uh, solve the problem. And once you begin to, to get into the, the heads of our kids in that manner, suddenly they realize that if I can make a difference, if I can find a solution, then I can make a difference to my life and to the lives of all the others around me, and then life can actually be fun. Then mathematics can actually be fun. And that is how we should approach the whole issue of math teaching. Professor Michael Lacordeur, thank you very, very much indeed, chairing the Department of Curriculum Studies in the Faculty of Education at Stellenbosch University. Um, Helen saying, I studied a BSc at UCT between 2020 and 2022. Our third year maths class was less than a half of previous years because of COVID. It's very difficult to learn maths without a physical teacher. Maybe this has affected the data being analyzed in this article. Um, Jean or Jean saying, disagree, one either can or can't do maths, however good the teacher is. I, no, I disagree with that. I think one can or one can do maths. Everybody can do maths. Not everybody can do advanced maths to the degree that you need to be able to do in order to do a degree in actuarial science, but everybody can do maths. Um, Kevin saying, my few years ago, my son was at a well-known northern suburbs Model C school. It was a matter of luck if you had a good maths teacher. Most were not. He then went to a private school. The maths teachers there were very much better. Sheila saying, my kids' high school did not have the very best maths teachers. I knew one kid was capable of more, so we took that child to an electrical engineer who offered extra maths, and that child attained a distinction because of that extra maths. 